Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to try to increase the flight time of my hexacopter by removing some weight. Um, I've got these ESCs here and the wires coming from the motors to the ESCs are way too long. So I'm going to try to chop those off and then just solder the minimal required wires from the motor to those ESCs. So I'm hoping to take out, I don't know, 8 to 10 inches of wire um, times 3 for the 3 wires on each motor, um, including the bullet connectors that came on it. So we'll see what type of weight savings we get. Um, I'm going to take it and put it on the scale now and just see what type of starting weight we're working with. And you'll see we're right at about 1,640 grams and that is without the battery and without the GoPro camera that I run mounted to my gimbal here. So I've got those sitting here on the table, so I'm going to grab those. Here's my Zippy FlightMax 5800 milliamp hour battery. And it's actually not a GoPro, it's a cheap knockoff, but it seems to work pretty well for this. I either use this SJ Cam or I actually use a Xiaomi Yi camera to film with. So with everything on there, my total all-up weight before the mod is 2,188 grams. So we'll see how many grams we can save here by chopping off some of these additional wires. So I've got things sped up here. You'll see I'm getting my heat shrink ready and I'll, I'll show you here in high speed how I do one of these arms. So I've already got one of these sections of wire removed. I'm now tinning the one side of the motor wire that I've stripped. And previously you saw me strip a little bit off of the wire going to the ESC. So just making sure I get everything tinned up here correctly. And then now tinning the ESC wire. And then you always got to remember to put that piece of heat shrink on there first. I had to desolder so many things in my life because I've forgotten that. But not this case. So I've got it soldered. That's pretty good. Now you see just how much extra wire I've got there. So I'm snipping off right at the bullet connector. And then I'm stripping off the insulation of the motor wire. And then I will kind of eyeball how much wire I need and I'll snip off the excess. You can see the pile of wires there in the background. And so now I just repeat the process, put a little piece of heat shrink on there. I will tin the motor wire. I'll tin the ESC wire. Then just line them up, get them hot, and the solder flows nicely right together. So it's pretty easy to get them to join. And you can just slip the heat shrink over the connection. And so we got one of these wires left. We'll snip it right at the bullet connector, strip off the insulation of the motor wire, measure it up. Trim off the ESC wire, strip a little bit of the insulation off of that, and don't forget your heat shrink, it will tin up the motor wire, and we'll tin up the ESC wire, and then once those are both tinned, we'll get them next to each other and heat it up and make sure the solder flows to form a really nice tight connection. Make sure everything's lined up and then slip the heat shrink over it. All right, so we're back on the table now. We're all done. And so we'll go ahead and put this thing up on the scale again. You'll see the pile of wires that we took off of this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it and set it back up on the scale. Remember with everything, battery camera, we were at 2,188 grams. 
And now with all of those wires removed, we're down to 2,105. So savings of 83 grams just by performing that mod. So that'll be a, a nice weight savings for us and should give us a small boost in flight time. Alrighty, so I got it a lot less weight. Got my Tyrannus here. This is the Craft and Theory uh, telemetry scripts along with their cable that connects to the X8R receiver for this Tyrannus. Um, so you can hear it as I... Position hold flight mode. Stabilize flight mode. Simple mode. Hold hold flight mode. Normal mode. So you got it here. You can see it tilt on the screen there. It's pretty, pretty awesome stuff. Position hold flight mode. Stabilize flight mode. It's pretty awesome. I've got my Xiaomi Yi on the front and I've got an ND2 filter on it. This is the cheap one that came from China. I'll probably get some, uh, some more expensive ones that are higher steps. Um, it's actually a pretty overcast day today, so this could actually work out pretty well. So we'll see what kind of footage we get here with the uh, Good Luck by Gimbal. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put push the arming switch here. We've got a green light flashing, which means that you've got GPS lock. So I'm going to push that, and you can also see here 14 satellites with a 3D fix. So, we've got the button armed. I'm going to go ahead and move my stick here in. Message received. Motors armed. There you go. So you can see we're armed. And then if I kick it up. This is my first flight with the uh, with the new soldered wires on it. So I'm going to put this GoPro down and we'll uh, see how she flies here. And I'll fire it back up while she's in the air. All right. So I've got it hovering in the air and it's it's flying pretty rock solid, stable. And actually, with the controls, you can feel. A difference in the weight and you'll see here at hover we're using between 25 and 30 amps um, prior to this we were using 35 to 40 amps at hover so we get a little bit more flight time out of this by saving those 83 grams by removing those wires um, loiter works really well on this this is using the stock pids i do want to try to get an auto tune to complete there's a light breeze today, maybe seven to eight miles an hour, and it's causing it to drift just a little bit. It probably stays within 10 feet of the position where I let go of the sticks. Uh, some of this is me moving it slightly to get it in the picture closer. And one thing I want to demonstrate as we go picture in picture here uh, and rotate down towards me is I have one of the controls on my Tirana set to control the tilt of the gimbal. So you'll see here as I bring that down, the gimbal rolls down. As I roll up, the gimbal rolls up and points towards the props. Uh, right at the center position of this, I have it set slightly pointed down and I'll bring it down even a little bit further. The cool thing with this is it's actually running through the Pixhawk, through the serial 4.5 port to the UART port on the Storm 32 board on that good luck by gimbal. So if I were to run an autonomous mission, I could actually configure uh, gimbal positions into that mission. So it hovers pretty great. Um, still want to do an auto tune and get the PIDs dialed in, but I'll leave you with some flight time and performance of the gimbal. Enjoy.